Welcome to the channel. This is the second video in the series that I'm doing on WebEx Calling. And today we're going to go over the WebEx Calling architecture. Now, WebEx Calling is available globally and it's delivered from redundant data centers in six regions around the world, including two in the US, two in Canada, two in Europe, with additional redundant data centers in London. Uh, there's two in Australia and two in Japan. Now, on top of that, there are additional data centers in New York and Singapore, and they provide uh, media services to optimize media round trip times. Now, the Singapore data center specifically is used to optimize media round trip times for WebEx calling customers in Asian countries where the round trip times to either the Australia or Japan region might be suboptimal. In any case, all data centers are interconnected by a multi gigabit and fully redundant backbone. So let's dial in and talk about what's going on at each of these data centers. Now, generally, each data center is home to you know, various network functions, so call control servers and load balancers and, and so forth. And, and this is, of course, to provide scalability and redundancy. Now, each data center also hosts two types of session border controllers, or SBCs. Now, the access SBCs are customer facing, so they terminate all of the customer facing SIP connections from local gateways, uh, endpoints, and soft clients. Essentially, they, they sit at the edge of the data center and act as the first point of contact for calls from outside the WebEx environment. Now, there's also the peering SBCs. Now, the peering SBCs terminate the SIP peering connections to SIP service providers. So what they do is they facilitate you know, those connections between the data center and other PST and service providers. Okay, so that's the data centers. Now, in addition, there are several other components that make up the larger WebEx cloud infrastructure. There's also the WebEx cloud and microservices components. And then for managing all of this, you know, not just WebEx calling, but meetings and messaging, managing all of this under a single pane of glass is, of course, Control Hub. And then uh, there's the WebEx backbone, which connects all of the WebEx microservices. Now, for WebEx calling endpoints like the MPP phone, for example, a single connection is established for each client, and uh, that's going to be SIP over TLS, registering to, again, to the Access SBC. And then the media is going to be encrypted SRTP over UDP. Now, if you're using the local gateway PSTN option, then that'll be just one more connection for the gateway, and that'll be SIP over TLS trunk still using SRTP over UDP for the media. In either case, firewall traversal is achieved by WebEx calling, continuing to use the same connection to send traffic back to the phone or local gateway. Now with endpoints like, say for example, the Desk Pro or a telepresence endpoint, when they're enabled for WebEx calling, the signaling is a little different. They're gonna use the HTTPS REST API and then the media there is encrypted SRTP. Now let's talk about the different PSTN options that are available with WebEx calling. The first is Cisco calling plans or Cisco PSTN. Now this option takes PSTN connectivity with WebEx calling and then bundles them into a single service uh, to provide customers with you know, a complete enterprise phone system delivered by a single vendor. Now here there's only one point of administration so you can order port and provision PSTN numbers directly from Control Hub. Now Cisco has set up shared SIP integration with a few cloud connected PSTN or CCP providers. For this option, an inbound call will go from the customer site over the top to the Access SBC WebEx calling, then matches incoming PSTN calls. Then the peering SBC connects to the PSTN provider over a SIP trunk connection. Now with CCP, the PSTN service is actually decoupled from Cisco's WebEx calling service. You have to go directly to that CCP provider and contract directly with them. So they are providing the SIP trunking service, which allows for direct connection between the PSTN and the peering SBC. Now with the premise-based PSTN or local gateway, which is what we're gonna use in this calling series, 
the customer deploys a local gateway on-premise running on a Cisco Voice Gateway or Cisco Unified Border Element or, or Cube for short. Leveraging existing enterprise PSTN connections to route calls between WebEx calling and the PSTN. So basically, when you have a local gateway deployed and registered to WebEx calling, uh, let's say you make an outbound call to the PSTN. In this case, uh, that call goes to WebEx calling, but if that number is not known, if, if it's not from within your organization, uh, in other words, then the call's gonna be sent back out to the local gateway, and then it'll route the call to the PSTN. In any case, the local gateway function is commonly deployed on the customer's premises, uh, but can also be hosted by a partner. And of course, you're not limited to using just one of these options. You can use any combination of Cisco calling plans, cloud-connected PSTN, or local gateway-based PSTN options across different sites. And these different locations, they can be anywhere, even in separate countries.